I'm Mary Maté sitting in for Jimmy Dore here with Misha Pollan, an American's comedian, Kurt Metzger. So Russia has accused Ukraine of trying to kill Putin with a drone attack on the Kremlin. And Ukraine has denied this, say we do not attack. We didn't attack Putin or Moscow. We fight on our own territory. That's what Zelensky said. And here is the footage again of that of that drone being intercepted over the Kremlin. There it is. So you have Russia accusing Ukraine of being responsible for this. Ukraine denies responsibility. How is the U.S. responding to this? Is the U.S. calling for calm? Is it calling for negotiations? Is it saying that we would oppose any effort to assassinate the leader of Russia because, among other things, that would spark World War III? No. The Biden administration is basically saying that attacks like this, if they do come from Ukraine— are totally fine with Washington. Wait, they didn't say Russia probably did it themselves? Well, some U.S. <laughs> officials have floated that, yes, yes. But Antony Blinken was asked about this, and he basically said that Ukraine has the green light to carry out strikes like this if they in want to. Russia? No, they don't. Watch this. And I want to start with the news overnight from the Kremlin, uh, accusing Ukraine of having tried to assassinate President Vladimir Putin with a drone strike uh, on the Kremlin uh, near near his his uh, his his residence. Ukraine has denied doing this. I want to ask the question this way: What is the United States' position on such attacks on leadership during this war by Ukraine or other combatants? Well, first, I've seen the reports. Um, I can't uh, in any way validate them. We simply we simply don't know. Um, Second, I would take anything coming out of the Kremlin with a very large shaker of salt. So let's see. Uh, we'll see what, uh, what, what the facts are. Um, and it's, it's really hard to comment or speculate uh, on this without really, uh, really knowing what the facts are. More generally, uh, as I've said and as we've said, when it comes to Ukraine, which is under daily assault, uh, and not just its incredibly courageous military forces, but its citizens, its men, women, and children being assaulted on a daily basis by this Russian aggression, being bombed out of their homes, their apartments, and their streets, children killed, families torn apart. Well, we leave it to Ukraine to decide how it's going to defend itself and how it's going to try to get back the territory that's been seized from it illegally by Russia over the past 14 months and going back to 2014, uh, back to then. So to, to clarify, if Ukraine decided on its own to strike back in Russian territory, the United States would not criticize that. Again, these are decisions for Ukraine to make about how it's going to defend itself, how it's going to get uh, its territory back, how it's going to restore its territorial integrity uh, and its sovereignty. That's Blinken. He's given an opportunity to say, you know, would you oppose direct strikes inside Russia, including strikes that might kill the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, and he declines. He says, this is up to Ukraine. Now, of course, Ukraine is being attacked by Russia. Do they have the right to attack inside Russia? Of course they do. It's self-defense. But does the U.S., which is fueling this war and has blocked all diplomatic efforts and is providing the weaponry and the intelligence that keeps this war going, do they have a stake maybe in saying that certain things are red lines because they would maybe cause World War III or the use of nuclear weapons. Of course they do, but this is Blinken deny, denying the opportunity to use U.S. leverage and say that we would oppose a strike that might start a nuclear exchange or start World War III. They don't care because all they want to do is keep this war going. We want. I mean, I don't think he, they would deny it. they shouldn't be able to try to kill Putin. I think people are like, yeah, right, they'll have to kill Putin, but the first thing he said was, we we have no idea. We Basically, we have zero oversight over anything they do, and they can do whatever they want. Yeah, <laughs> like that's yeah. his message. That is, which is which we know is not true because look again. This was this was this was reported recently at U.S. behest. Ukraine held off anniversary attacks on Russia. Ukraine wanted to launch strikes on Moscow <laughs> on the anniversary of Russia's invasion, and the U.S. told them not to. So that's Deep because inside the inside enemy lines, it says. Yeah. So which means, yeah. That shouldn't that mean like Donbass, where they're uh, wherever. Well, Russia's they have a green there. light there for sure already. They can go crazy there, but yeah, uh, it, they wanted to strike Moscow, and the U.S. told them not to. So this idea from Lincoln that, that we don't we don't know uh, that's undermined by even these recent leaks. And 
again, from that article, they reported this, that Washington was closely monitoring what Ukraine was doing. And two days before the anniversary, the CIA reported that Ukraine had agreed at Washington's request to postpone strikes on Moscow. So U.S. has such leverage over Ukraine that when it asks, Ukraine can say, okay, fine, we'll wait till a later date to do it. And the question is now, is this drone strike on the Kremlin, was that possibly one of these strikes that were p- postponed until later? I mean, not a lot of juice for the squeeze, I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, and you're right. You know, some U.S. officials are already saying this might be a false flag from Russia. And that's very funny. And maybe it is a false flag. Well, why would Ru- like, I'm well, trying to think of why Russia would. So if I was going to be Anthony or whatever, what, I, I would go Russia is false flagging it because um, Putin, everyone hates him in his own country. And, and he's got to show them that they yeah, need to stay at war. That's possible. That's how I'd spin it. Because it, it's possible. What are the reasons? It's possible, or to give himself an excuse to escalate this even more, but I don't think they would need that. But it's, look, it's possible. But what's funny is whenever the U.S. and its allies, they're accused of false flags, anyone who accuses, say, rebels in Syria of carrying out a false flag, they're dismissed as conspiracy theorists. So you're only allowed to suspect bad guys of carrying out false flags. When our allies are accused of it, that's just a conspiracy theory. Well, it's, okay, what I think, just my, I, he said I can't, he can't speculate, but sure he can. I'm going to speculate right now. <laughs> <laughs> of course he can. I'm wildly speculating that it was the strike when that went, because it was so pathetic looking. Like, and okay, let's say they snuck it past how you said, they used some civilian thing. Like, you got to know it's not going to get him. So, but what it does do is seem like, oh, they hit our president. Yeah. We will provoke him into getting into, because we're about to lose funding. Yeah. And, and we, there's more to keep America going. Yeah. You know, I don't know. That's, that's what my wild speculation. What I want to know is, remember when Mark Hamill was, uh, of Star Wars fame was fundraising for Ukrainian drones? <laughs> so wouldn't it be great if, wouldn't it be hilarious if one of these drones uh, uh, was one of his and like that was caused world wing? <laughs> like a little X wing fighter coming in. <laughs> uh, didn't Mark, you would think, not everybody knows the black son of Himmler's SS, I guess, but... You would think when it's right on the screen, it would trigger a Star Wars memory since oh, they base the Empire's logo off that. We're telling jokes in Nashville, Honolulu, Los Angeles, Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, Cohoes, New York, Hartford, Connecticut, Baltimore, Chicago, Rosemont, San Diego, and more. Go to JimmyDoor.com to see, get a link for all those tickets. Plus, you can watch my new special, COVID Lies Are Funny. <laughs> <laughs>